screen. Hello, hi everybody. It's Patricia and I'm here with Michelle. Hello. And today we're gonna talk to you about trust in love or really what we wanna talk about is romance and how do you trust that love is going to find you again? How do you how do you trust someone again if you've been burned in love? Not just trusting in love like you're going to read in an ancient scripture somewhere, you know. How do you trust that love is here for you, love's going to find you and that you can trust the person that you know maybe is drawn to you or that you're drawn to. So you know, there's a lot of questions that surround this because I think collectively we're leaving the patterns that have been, been ancestral where people that normally might have an arranged marriage or stay within the same group of people, like their nationality, their religion, they're branching out. It's much more socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, legally, there is more... Um, protection, I would say, particularly for LGBTIQ people or, yeah. And also um, the things that people want to, you know, want to explore, like some people are exploring everything from polygamy to uh, polyamory and things like um, what is called, I, I just saw this the other day, sologamy or sologamy or something, where you're essentially marrying yourself. But what about people who really just want to be with someone? <laughs> Can we just make it that simple? Like, hey, I want to be with someone. I want to be with someone and enjoy the holidays. I want to be with someone and ring in the new year with someone. How do you get out there? How do you trust? How do you attract? Mm -hmm. How do you really attract? And so I, you had a lot of questions, Michelle. Like I well, you were posing good questions, I should say. Yeah, and I think, Patricia, I'd like to ask you, because I know this is your specialty in so many ways, and you've been doing this for so many years, is the woundedness. There's so many wounds that we carry inside us. And why do you think people, um, like, what are some of those wounds that we carry that stop us from trusting again? Yeah. Well, um, some of the wounds are patterns. I would say that there's two main levels um, with like maybe little sub levels in there. One is they're not superficial. They are distinctly wounds. They hurt. Our feelings get hurt, but some of them are relatively minor things such as um, being rejected, um, your self-esteem, you know, your own self-perception. Do you feel that you're too fat? too ugly, too, you know, too this, too that, you're inadequate somehow. Men and women both have insecurities like that. But it goes, those things go beyond insecurities to what has actually happened to you really throughout your existence and sometimes to your own uh, people. So these can be things that have carried over throughout ancestries, such as, um, you know, intermarrying or cousins marrying each other, or you have to stay in the same religion and you, you know, you play by the rules and you get burned anyway, because the person you're linked up with, they cheat, they lie, they even steal. I I had a friend, not kidding. I mean, she was sort of like a friend, a friend's sister, but we knew her gorgeous girl. Her groom was so handsome. He was, I mean, he was literally Mr. Charming, but he was sincerely charming. Mm -hmm. And one day she goes to the bank. This was after their marriage, after a few months, and she's going to take out some money and there's almost no money there. And they had said to her, you know, like, we thought you were aware of this. Wow. He was systematically draining her account because he had a gambling addiction. And these are much more prevalent with men. Gambling is a root chakra addiction because it's an addiction. It's along with a whole lot of other things. So is, and then the cheating and the lying goes with it because you're not, you're, you're actually a financial cheater. He didn't mess around with her. He didn't, I mean, he didn't, he didn't have an affair with someone else. He was at the horse track. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were blown away that this happened. How does she recover from that? How does she trust? 
How does she build trust if she decides to stay in that marriage? Mm -hmm. And these are things that people don't realize when we're just looking at the superficial, we see a hot guy or we see the charm or we, you know, hear the lines that they're using on us. How do you engage really your heart chakra so that you can feel, not only feel and detect and have your radar up, but go do, 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 like really literally deflect the wrong people away. Mm-hmm. What if someone is coming towards you and you're trying to stay celibate for meeting someone who you really want to? This is such a misconcept out there that people, particularly women, feel like they have to go through with someone just to be able to say no and then can't say no. They can't yeah. say no to the relationship or to the sex and they feel awful. I feel like sometimes too, it's like they are just feeling like they've hit a wall and they keep attracting the same kind of person and they don't understand like, why is this happening? As you said, like the patterns and the things that are going on inside us and they just kind of settle for it, thinking that, well, this is all there is, but there's so much more. Yes. Well, and people stay stuck in these patterns because these patterns have been all connected to us. It's like we're interlinked and we're interlinked through the chakra that is called I will. It's Mm -hmm. our will. Mm -hmm. No, it's not because many people are doing things under duress, under obligation, because they feel like they have to, because it's been like that for centuries, Mm -hmm. the patterns of women, the patterns of men. Gay people have the same issues and they even have other dynamics, like who's going to be on top, who's going to be on bottom, who's, you know, who's the dominant one, who's the submissive one. This is a big dynamic uh, within, you know, some of those communities and people may not be aware of it, but people do also find comfort because it's the rules and they're there to play by the rules. They're not necessarily there to find love. But for your heart and your soul, this is what's different is people are up leveling so that they can literally find love, find the person who is not only into them because they're in them, they're an intrinsic part of them, of their soul. And they're not just someone else. They're not, you know, someone way out there. And I wanted to ask you too, that I hear this a lot about trauma bonding and what it is and why are we connected to people? Oh, where do we start? A <laughs> bottomless pit will open on this topic. Yeah. Because people bond with their kidnappers. People bond with people who have harmed them because they cannot see the forest through the trees. This is why people cannot recognize abuse patterns, even when everyone else around them and and you, if you look at a society, it's worse because the people have no choices. There's nowhere to go. There's been insufficient protection. I would say, you know, maybe if this were medieval times, you could go hire an assassin and take care of the abuser, <laughs> or you could, um, you know, get your big brother. Like if it was my old neighborhood and, you know, someone's giving the sister a hard time, the big brother would go straighten him out and like, Usually 98% of the time, that would be the end of it. Mm -hmm. We're not here to live by that kind of violence or domestic violence or retaliation as to what happens behind closed doors. You know, if that couple becomes a couple and we're seeing this like publicly, I mean, people are making movies out of real fiction as they say, the truth is stranger than fiction. People sometimes can't even write the stuff that's happening in real life in this life yeah and I know what I see too in uh, the dynamic of people is that superficiality of like what can you do for me and with what's underneath all of that is like the years of being burnt in relationships and now there's this just this huge wall up and Mm -hmm. when you engage in that you're not engaging from your heart no. You're engaging from your mind and there's, there's nothing there. And then it, you know, continues to fall apart, fall apart, fall apart. And we're, you know, we're here for something real. We're here yes. for something real. Well, you and I know we're here for something real. There's some people that 
they cannot see the forest for the trees and you can't tell them they need to experience it, which yeah. is why some people have that like, you know, rush of uh, insight or an awakening of some type that happens to them. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that happens, people aren't always willingly put up putting up walls we do have parts of us that don't want to engage with the wrong person and yes. people won't accept it. People won't yes. accept that they're getting ghosted maybe for their own health. Yes. And they, they will take it to heart quite literally. Uh, they make themselves sick over it. They stay in a victim mentality. And that's, if it really wasn't a bad relationship, they're just like, Oh, I got ghosted. Oh, they're not responding to me. Oh, this, that, and the other thing. And but what happens chemically in their body, that is what I'm here to fix because people do get bitter. Yes. That bitterness lives in the same I will chakra. Usually it's around the liver. Um, there's two areas. There's a couple of areas beside the mind that this affects people. Um, this can account for some irritable bowel syndrome in people that the doctors don't know why, but it's buried it's frozen emotion it's buried emotion and we know how to pop it out <laughs> but only if you want to if you want to continue living like a curmudgeon you know and getting bitter and angry or what I see sometimes is that you know um it's really odd I used to work with all women and I kid you not at three o'clock every afternoon they would just start a bitch session about <laughs> the men in their lives it was so noticeable to me that I'd go, okay, ladies, it's three o'clock time <laughs> to talk about the men. And they didn't and kept saying to myself, but these are supposed to be heterosexual women that claim to like men and love men. But what they didn't like was what men did to them. Mm -hmm. They wanted good sex. They wanted good relationships. They didn't like all the crap that men were shoveling in their lives. And you know, I have two good brothers. They've borne the brunt of some not so nice women too. I mean, women, it goes both ways. Women yeah. can shovel it just as much as men. We may do it in a different way. A men may use an ax and we may use like a little poison tip thing. Um, so yeah, we were talking, we were talking sometimes about like, you know, the dating scene. Yeah swiping yeah. and swiping well and i Not just safe i don't consider it safe i don't consider it conducive to true growth because yeah. what i teach people is how to develop your own heart chakra so that you're not seeking you're attracting yeah you're attracting the love you want in your life and not just romantic love yes romantic passion passionate love love is a primal feeling you know, love yes. is primal. It's yeah. one of the very first things we begin and end with. It's yes. all the in-between of our life that messes us up when it comes to love. We come in from a loving space, ideally, hopefully loved by the people that bore us mm -hmm. and, or they did their best to love us in their way. And as we leave, maybe surrounded by people, like they say, you come in naked, you leave naked. Yes. But, Take your last breath. Yeah. We I think that, and I think that it's important for people to remember that in, if you are hitting those walls within yourself and you're just looking back and going, okay, like I want my 2023 to start off differently and I want to do some work on myself so that I can magnetize that person to me. I want to, I want to feel loved and cared for and adored and like all those things that you deserve exactly that a person deserves yeah yes then it's time for you to join us and learn some of these things and experience and ask good questions please because yes. god only knows i've had a fair amount of people i've been doing this with people for 15 years actively i've actually i think if i look to my childhood from the age of six Mm -hmm. I've had many of my gifts open. Everything's been open. I, I actually assumed everyone did. It wasn't until maybe as a teenager, I realized people didn't really live by their senses. Not everyone did. 
the way I did, that they didn't have dreams that told them things or mm -hmm. showed them things. And, you know, this, I'd like to help open people's gifts so that they get open themselves and they can sense and feel because when it comes to the romantic love, you feel each other in a deeply intimate way that just isn't possible through the internet. Another thing to mention too, people sometimes are thinking an internet relationship is, you know, it's not the same as a physical relationship. I've been doing this a long time. And if some, I've had a number of people who have met a gigolo, have met an addict, have just met someone over the internet that they don't even really know who that is on the other end and been built for big dollars, $20,000, $40,000. Mm -hmm. Now, People even get cheated in their relationships. And believe it or not, Michelle, do you, I've had a number of people I've worked with to ease out of their marriage or ease their marriage into a different level. And they've had warning signs where the bank calls them and says, oh, the CD is ready for $8,000. Could you please come and sign it? And she's like, what? She knew nothing about what her husband oh. was doing with that $8,000. Yeah. But she got a heads up, courtesy of the universe. So when you're putting yourself in the mode of upgrading, up-leveling, working with your heart chakra for the purpose that it is here for, mm -hmm. for love, real yes. love, you do get loved back. You get reciprocity and you begin to get it from the person who is attracted to you. Yeah, it's not someone that you have to bang on their door and and big yeah. and plead and eh, none of that stuff. None of that yeah. stuff. That's not, that's not real love. That's not true. There's a hard communication that can take place through the eyes and that completely bypasses the mind. And it's stronger than telepathy and it's deeper mm -hmm. and it's so much more intimate and it can happen across the miles. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's like having a heart connected cell phone. Yes. Wireless. <laughs> yes. And it's, it's time for us to be able to use this to have what we want for 2023. Let's do it differently this year. Yeah. If you're seeking romantic love in your life, um, get started here. Get, let us help you get started with your foundation, which needs to include breathing so that you can get your channels and your additional chakras opened and also so that you can experience that's what I find Michelle is a lot of people have either forgotten what it's like to be held caressed loved appreciated told just... kind words to yeah. and some people never have some people have only known abuse which is a shame but we're here to change it. Yeah. And we're here to dig that out too, to help support you so that you can feel those in your, maybe in your life for the first time. Yes, absolutely. So um, reach out to us. If you have questions, please check the links below. Um, you will see the link to join our class. You will also see Michelle's website, my website, and our email addresses. Please join. We got to get started with this and uplift. If you know what is it saying, you know, be the change you wish to see in the world. Because yes. if nothing changes, then nothing changes or will change. So let's get some changes going for the new year. Yep. Thanks so much. Bye now. Thank you.